Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass and today we're talking summertime jig fishing. Three different tricks that you can use to improve your time on the water to catch more bass and to get bigger bites this summer. A jig is an amazing way to get a big bite in the summertime. You can get a ton of fish, you can get giant bites. It's really a bait that can do everything. This time of year, I try to focus my attention on baits that will get a lot of bites, but will also get the big bite. And there are differences. See, throwing a worm will get you a ton of bites, a smaller worm. Throwing a bigger worm will get you a big bite, but not a ton of bites. A jig, it's a compact profile. It's the best of both worlds. You'll catch a lot of fish. When that giant comes along, you'll get that one too. So what I wanna do today is help you really fine tune your fishing with a couple of different tricks, different way to work it, a different bait, so that you can dial it in and get your odds as high as possible of getting that big bite this summer. Now, to kick this off, for the guy that doesn't wanna go all the way down the rabbit hole, you're not looking for a 100 different tricks that you can use, you just want to catch a fish. To make this ultra simple for you, if I could only have one jig to do everything all the time, it would be this jig right here. This is a half ounce pitchin' jig. It's got this arky style, rounded style head. A pitching jig is good at everything. It's not perfect for flipping. It's not perfect for rock. It's not perfect for grass, but it will do all of it. It is the most universal head. It's got a really stout hook in it, so you can catch small ones, but when you hook a big one, you're going to get that fish. You're not going to get bent out. That's key. Color-wise, this is actually my favorite color combo too. This color is called Go To. It's a combination of green pumpkin and pumpkin, the few different tones in it. But if I could only have one, it's that. It's paired up with a sweet beaver in green pumpkin red. That combo right there, if I could only have one, that's it. Now I've got some other colors I love, some different trailers I love, but that is the bread and butter. Grab one jig, go to the lake, throw a jig with confidence. That will do it. Now. For the rest of you, let's get a little bit deeper. The first tip I want to give you is this guy right here. Some of you already noticed in the last few videos where I was throwing a jig, I was not throwing my standard pitching jig this summer. I was throwing a compact pitching jig. And I noticed in the comments that a few people picked up on it and wanted to know why. So let me go into the details on this. A compact pitching jig is essentially the same head design, virtually identical. But if you can see the hooks, it is a much, much smaller hook. It's lighter wire. It's also shorter shanked. So it doesn't drop down anywhere near as far. Overall, it's just a much smaller combo. So the first tip I wanna give you is this guy right here. The compact pitching jig, you're going to fish it in the exact same situations. It will do almost anything, but it's a lighter wire hook and a smaller package. So why did I key in on that this summer over any other year? We spent a lot of time this year in really clear water. We spent the first half of the summer up north in the northern part of the U.S. traveling around fishing largemouth and smallmouth in a lot of really, really clear water environments. When I go to a compact pitching jig, I get all those great benefits of the pitching jig, but I can do it on lighter line. This lighter hook can be set with a softer rod. It can be set with 10 to 12 pound line. I'm not needing, you know, 12, 15, 17, 20 pound line to really get the job done. I can drop down. When I get those bites, I can still get a good hook set in those fish. And because I'm going to lighter line, I'm getting more bites. Also, I have the ability to just make it a smaller profile overall. So instead of using a full size beaver, I go down to a smally beaver or I go down to a chunk style bait and the overall profile 
it is quite a bit smaller. So again, in that clearer water, I'm tending to get more bites. It's just very universal. Now, again, if I could only have one, it's the standard pitching jig because there are times where I want that bigger, beefier hook and I want to get those fish. And when I need to just throw it in other applications, I still can. But if you want to fine tune it this summer, if you want to maximize your time, get more bites in clearer water, that guy will do it. I was still throwing this on Clear Lake when we got back home because Clear Lake had an unusually clear year. Clear Lake is typically a murky water fishery. The name is a complete misnomer. It misleads people. That lake is pretty murky. One to four feet of visibility is standard there. Every once in a while, it'll get cleaner. This year, it was surprisingly clean. Again, that smaller profile made a big difference. So that's number one. Number two is I want to talk to you about a different way to fish your jig this summer. Now this is a, it's actually a flipping jig. It's got a rage crawl on the back end of it, okay? Don't worry about either of those things. What I want you to focus in on here is the fact that it is a three quarter ounce jig. You could do this with a flipping jig. You could do it with a football jig. Any three quarter ounce jig will do it. And any trailer that will kick aggressively will do it. My standard retrieve with a jig is to throw that thing out there and let it go to bottom. And I use a, a two part hop with a jig in the summertime. I like aggressive movement, but I don't wanna overdo it most of the time. So what I like to do is I reel up that slack, make sure I'm tight on that bait, I know where it's at. And then I use a two part hop, so I bump it and then pull it, bump it, pull it. And that's how I fish the jig 95% of the time. So get that slack out, a little bump and pull. Reel up my slack, bump, pull. What that imitates in my mind is a craw working its way across the bottom. If you've ever spooked a crawdad, an actual live crawfish, they tend to jump up and then take off. That's their, mo their movement, they pop up off the bottom, and they're gone. So that's what I want to simulate. So a little bump off the bottom, followed by a bigger hop. So it comes up, it moves, it drops. Comes up, moves, drops. I want that bass to think that that crawfish is spooked and it wants to get away. That's how I get the most bites in the summertime. So again, just a little hop, pull. Hop, pull. I'm starting to get into a grass bed right here. It's getting a little harder to do it as I get in closer but that'll get those bites. Those fish will almost always eat either as soon as that bait gets back to bottom or on the way to bottom. So they don't eat on the first hop, right at the top of the second hop. They might eat it there or they might eat it as it's falling back down. But again, this is not an aggressive movement. So it's not getting me out of position. So even if I'm up here at the top and I get bit, I have a very strong hook set. Now, today I wanna to talk to you about stroking a jig. This is something different. That same jig, this is where the three quarter comes into play. You need a fast falling jig. I want a trailer that will kick. So that's why I went with that Rage Craw. I could use a Kinky Beaver. I could use a variety of different baits. Uh, the Zoom Z Craw, the same bait I like on that wobble head. All those baits will kick. That's what you want. So you need that heavier head because you still want a fast fall even as those tails are trying to slow that thing back down. If you don't have a heavier head, if you only have a 3 8 or a half ounce jig, you can still make it work if you use a standard beaver or another bait that has dead action, that doesn't kick while it's falling because they will fall faster. So you can do it with a lighter jig if you have to but you are much better off with that heavier jig, three quarter or even heavier. Stroking a jig is about a much more aggressive movement. I still use that two hop, but then I follow that bait back to bottom and I'm doing it much harder. This is a reaction bite. Think of this more like throwing a crankbait, throwing a chatterbait, trying to get that aggressive attacking bite. So this is a crawdad that just shoots up off the bottom and the fish out of pure aggression, pure reaction, just lash out and smash that thing. So the way you do it is again, that double hop, but much harder. And then I follow it back down.
Now, there are a couple of complications here. As I'm following that bait back down, that is always when the bite comes. That bait jumps, it takes off, and as soon as it turns and starts to fall, that fish that's coming roaring devours that thing, which means your bite comes when the rod is already up here, and that is brutal. So what you need to be prepared for is even though you're up there and you're already in the back seat, if you know that's when the bite is coming, you can still get that hook set. If you're not ready, you are going to blow that bite every time because you're already in the back seat, you're running out of power and you don't have very far to go. So you really have to be cognitive of your position and when that bite will come. But the reason we do this is that this, again, gets a reaction bite. And we know that reaction bites catch big ones because a big bass tends to be smarter than the rest. They tend to make less mistakes. They've already been down that road. So they may not come along and eat that slow moving jig. They might look at it and decide that's not the real thing. But when that thing flies by their face, core reaction is lash out and eat. So what you're trying to do with this is not go out and catch a bunch of fish. You go and use that standard retrieve to catch a bunch of fish. You drop down to a smaller size, go to a compact pitching jig to catch a bunch of fish. But when you want that big bite, try stroking that jig. So again, if I'm up here and I get bit, I'm going to have to really lay back to get the hook set, but it can be done. Rod is key for this. You need that longer rod. This is a seven, six. I would say about a 7.5 is minimum to really be able to still get a good hook in them. 7.5, 7.6, 7.7. You want that longer rod. Stroking a jig is not a beginner's technique. It's going to take a little bit of practice, but it will get you those big bites. Now, there's a little bit of a cheater's way to do this. So here's a quick tip. If you're on a slope, typically, if you're out on a boat, you're fishing downhill. If you're on the bank, you're fishing uphill. So it's a little easier for you. But if you're the guy on the boat and you're coming downhill, you can't use this next tip because you'll end up too far away from the bottom and your bait will pendulum. It won't go back to bottom. But if you're on a fairly flat area, so where I'm casting here is actually very, very flat. Not a lot of depth change. So if I stroke that jig, now it's got to fall back to bottom. Well, if I pulled it 10 feet away or five feet away from a steep slope, I jump out here, it's got to fall really far to get back to bottom. And if you're not there with that rod tip high to follow it down and feed it that line, it won't make it back to bottom and your pendulum. But on this flat, I can cheat the system, keep better position just by burning and stopping. Now you don't get the double hop, but it is much easier. So I just burn that handle, pause, and that bait is running and then sinking. Running and sinking. And on a flat, it works. On slope, I'm eating up all that line and it'll just drift and that won't work. But it works on a flat. So if you want a simpler way, if the other way is exhausting, you can catch fish doing this too. But I do recommend, if you can, you do that full stroke of that jig to really draw those big bites. Last thing I wanna to talk to you guys about today, just one more quick tip, is summertime is the time to experiment with your jig trailer. So I've got a little stack of trailers here, just as some examples. The Z-Craw is the standard beaver that I love so much. I love the Yamamoto Double Tail. Well, earlier this year, we started playing with some different double tails because I was getting them in different colors that Yamamoto didn't make. You know, a Rage Craw, a Rage Chunk, a Rage Menace, the Standard Beaver versus a Kinky Beaver. You've got all these different options. The Spicy Beaver. Winter time, late fall, experimentation is over. Okay, I want to make this really clear. A lot of these baits, they have different consistencies. Some are tougher than others. Some are really soft. They fall apart really quickly. Well, those ones that are ultra soft and fall apart really quickly, they just don't hold up to a lot of bites. You know, like a Senko. 
Seems like every fish or two on a Senko, that thing falls apart. Well, a Yamamoto double tail grub, pretty similar. They tend to fall apart. They make them that soft so that they will continue to move even in cold water. So again, winter time, not the time to experiment. You wanna go to those softest proven trailers where you will continue to get some movement. But in summertime when the water is hot, even the really rigid plastics tend to have great movement. And in some instances, they're even better. Say stroking that jig, if I did that with a, a Yamamoto double tail grub, for example, I'm pulling that thing so hard that it will literally just pull the tail straight through the water and they won't actually be swimming. I'm overpowering it. So by going to that spicy beaver, kinky beaver, rage crawl, those things, I've got a bait that is more rigid and it can resist that and it will still kick even at those high speeds. So there's a time and a place for both. So this is the time of year. If you wanna try some different styles of trailer, some different brands of trailer, just try to expand your fishing. This is when you do it. As we go into the fall, that's when you wanna lay off the experimentation, go back to those tried and true trailers that you know will still get a cold water bite. So down in the video description, like every video, I'll link you the gear I'm talking about. I'll link you my favorite jig, that one tried and true pitch and jig. I'll give you the exact color, maybe a couple other recommendations, the compact. I'll also give you some of those trailers that I like to experiment with that you might wanna try as well. Uh, the combos that we use when it comes time to stroke that jig, all these different things that will just make your life a little bit easier if you wanna check those out. But guys, summertime is jig time. You can throw it year round, but summer is a time where a lot of people stop getting big bites. There's still ways to catch them. And a jig is one of those baits where you're not hurting yourself. You're not getting less bites. You're still getting a lot of those smaller fish. But when it comes time for that big one, you're getting them too. Don't be afraid to get out there this summer. Don't be afraid to go out in the heat. If you don't wanna be in the heat, go out early, go out late, but try some of this stuff. You'll be surprised what you can catch. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.